Hello, in this tutorial I'm going to explain you how to create a free RTOS task using the ASP32 and Arduino core. As target board, I'm going to be using an ASP32 Fire Beetle board from DF Robert. So before we get started looking into the code, it's important to mention that when we are coding uh, with Arduino core, we have access to IDF functionalities. IDF is the framework from Espressive uh, that is used, this, this is the official framework from Espressive to program the SP32. So IDF uses as uh, operating system free RTOS, which means that by coding in the Arduino core, which is built on top of IDF, we can also access free RTOS functionalities. So free RTOS uh, is a real-time operating system. And one important thing to mention uh, about free um, about uh, uh, real-time operating systems is the concept of tasks. So tasks are typically the building blocks of these types of uh, operating systems uh, and they are basically blocks of code that have their own uh, execution context and then there is a schedule, a scheduler from the operating system that is responsible for deciding which task is executing at a given moment and that decision is uh, is made based on the priority of the tasks. Uh, so basically, uh, having the possibility of launching multiple tasks in parallel allows us to develop a program uh, in such a way that is very similar to programming uh, in a multi-threaded environment. Uh, so for some applications, this scales much better than having the typical uh, infinite loop or also called the executive loop that uh, is typically used in microcontrollers. So having uh, an operating system behind the scenes handling um, the execution of these tasks uh, gives us a much more flexible uh, paradigm for programming. Of course, that for more uh, complex programs, this is a plus. For much simpler programs, it may, uh, it may not make sense uh, to start going to uh, the use of tasks and probably a simple executive loop uh, may be enough. So, but obviously that is an architectural decision. Um, in our actual program, I'm going to focus uh, in a very simple function call to create a task that will execute and then uh, will finish. Uh, I'm not going to cover in, in detail all the, the, the arguments uh, of this function call because FreeRTOS is a complex environment, it's a complex system. Uh, obviously not complex in terms of being very difficult, uh, but in terms of uh, the concepts, it has a lot of concepts that we need to, to analyze in detail, and it's better to go step by step and start to do uh, simpler stuff and then uh, build more complex functionalities on top of it. So, uh, looking into the actual code, uh, as usual, we start our setup function um, by, by opening a serial connection and then I'm doing here a small delay. After that, uh, in order to create a task, uh, we simply need to call this xTaskCreate function. This is a function from the FreeRTOS API that will receive six parameters. So the first parameter is uh, the task function. Basically, as I've said before, um, a task is a block of code that will execute and uh, we need, as programmers, we need to specify which will be this block of code that will be executing in the context of a task. And basically, uh, it's a function that we define. Uh, and obviously, the implementation of that function is up to us how we implement it. Nonetheless, it's important to take in consideration that this function needs to follow a predefined signature, which is the one you can see here. So the function needs to return void and needs to receive uh, pointer to void as parameter. And we'll see in a minute why this is uh, this parameter here exists. So a second argument of the x task create function, uh, we need to pass a string with the name of the task. Uh, and here for, for uh, just uh, coherency of what I'm doing, I'm just calling it task one because I just have a single task. But of course you can put here whatever you, uh, you think you should call to your task. As third parameter, uh, we need to specify the stack size uh, of our task. So defining the stack size uh, or calculating the stack size for our task 
Um, it's not easy to do, it's something not trivial, there is not a, a simple recipe on how to do it. Um, but I'm not going to enter here in detail how to do it, because I want to keep this tutorial simple. So I'm passing here a value that is more than enough uh, for the example we are covering. So as for the argument of the x task rate function, uh, we can pass a parameter that will be uh, that will be then used by FreeRTOS uh, that will pass it to our uh, task function. So basically, we can specify here a parameter that that will then receive in our task function as a pointer to void. And uh, it's a pointer to void because uh, we may want to pass here any data structure, and then we will need to cast this pointer to void uh, to the suitable um, data type that we are that we have passed as parameter. So having a generic pointer to void is the easiest way uh, of allowing us to specify here a pointer to any data structure, and then it's just a matter of doing the correct casts inside the function. But again, to keep this example simple, I'm not going to pass any parameter to my function. So I'm specifying here null, and inside the function, I will not make use of this parameter. So a fifth argument, uh, and this one is very important, uh, is when uh, is uh, where we specify the priority of the task. And as I've said before, it's according to the priorities of each task uh, that the FreeRTOS scheduler will decide which task is executing at a given moment. Um, since I have just a single task here, I'm just creating a single task, we don't need to worry much about this priority. Uh, so I'm assigning here um, the priority of 1, but taking into consideration that higher numbers mean higher priorities. So 0 would have a lower priority, uh, and 2 will, would have a higher priority than a uh, task with the value 1. As 6 parameter here, um, we can pass here a variable that will receive uh, a task handle, and basically this task handle is how we can reference this task from outside its execution context. So imagine that after a while uh, executing this task, I wanted to delete it from outside its context, from, uh, for example, from inside the main loop or uh, from the setup function after a delay or something, uh, I could uh, use a task handle that is uh, returned here as a reference to that task. Uh, but in this tutorial, I'm not going to, to make use of any of these references because the task will be able to delete itself once it does all the, all the work that it has to do. But keep in mind that this is the, the use of this sixth argument. So and from this point onward, uh, we should have already uh, uh, have our task executing. Uh, so, moving on to the actual implementation of our task, this will be very simple, it's basically a task with a loop from 0 to 9, uh, with a small one second delay between each iteration of the loop, and that prints a message saying hello from task 1. After it prints all the, uh, all the iterations of the loop, uh, I'm just printing here a message indicating that the task has ended, and then the task will delete itself with a call to the vTaskDelete function and passing null here. Uh, the, this function um, is used to delete a task, and it could receive here as input a handle to a task that we wanted to delete. So, for example, if I wanted to delete task 1 uh, from the loop, I would pass as input of this vTaskDelete the handle for the task, but since I'm calling vTaskDelete from inside task1 and I want to delete task1, I simply pass here null and FreeRTOS knows that the task is deleting itself. And basically, this is it. This is a very simple, uh, very simple implementation for a FreeRTOS task. Um, and uh, now it's just a matter of testing. I've already uploaded the code to my SP32. As you can see here, it had already executed, but I'm going to reset it so you can see the task executing again. So as you can see, uh, the, task, uh, the task is executing and is, is printing the messages that we defined with a small delay between each one. And then at the end, uh, the task deletes itself. And from this point onward, we have our loop that was running, uh, that is running infinitely 
uh, with a small one second delay because we don't have any useful computation to do here. So uh, this is it. This is a basic introduction on how we create a task uh, with free RTOS. Uh, but keep in mind that this, this is really, really, really the basic because there are a lot of more complex functionalities that we can achieve with free RTOS. So uh, I really encourage you to explore uh, the API, the free RTOS API, um, all the use cases that you can that you can have by using this uh, operating system. And uh, you'll see that this will open up a world of new possibilities on how to program your ASP32. So we'll be moving on uh, from this, this paradigm of having an infinite loop and have to, to code a lot of, uh, of uh, stuff in sequence uh, to a much, much more flexible uh, programming model where you just have um, your tasks running in parallel independently from each other and you have your operating system taking care of all the complexity uh, of uh, deciding when to execute one task or another uh, for you. Of course that this is not just uh, just uh, good things, there are also um, not bad things but things to take in consideration is that you need to be careful about how to synchronize multiple tasks um, you need to specify the priorities of the tasks in such a way that they are executed when you expect them to be executed. So it's it's a, a change of paradigm that is very, very powerful, but also it's not trivial to get started with it. Nonetheless, I will encourage you to explore this a little bit more uh, and you'll see that with time it will compensate and will it will give you much more flexibility. So hope you, if you, you have enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, thank you very much for watching.